it's it's been kind of a ride to get you on the show here, but I'm so glad that uh, that we finally got together. Me too. Yeah, I was filming and the hours were really crazy, so I knew I had to really kind of focus on that. And um, it was the lead role, so there was a lot, of, a lot to get down and prepare for. I'm uh, I'm a fan of yours, so uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> I think people don't realize that when you are the lead in a in a film mm -hmm. and a TV series, uh, that the work doesn't get done when they yell cut, wrap, check the gate. It you you have to come in for pickups, you have to come in for additional scenes and foley and things like that. And uh, it doesn't end sometimes. No, it's it's a, a 24. I, I feel like acting when you're in a project, it's like 24 seven, because if I'm not working on my scenes, I'm usually like thinking about what, what do I have to prepare for or what do I have to, um, you know, I, or I'm backtracking and I'm thinking about how did I do in those scenes or something like that. So it's just never ending. It's always besides ADR and pickups and everything like that. So. Growing up in New Jersey, when did, did you have the acting bug at a, at a very early age? Were you always performing? You know, I definitely remember saying to my mom when I was very young, I was around five, that I wanted to be a movie director. And I don't really know if I even knew what that meant at the time, but I just said, I want to be a movie director. That was what I wanted to, to do. And so I was interested in entertainment. I loved movies, even from a very young age. And then I would really push my parents to kind of put me in, um, you know, regional theater type projects. And I did voice lessons, I did um, singing. And, you know, I really like to be on stage. I like to perform, but it wasn't something that I was actively pursuing as far as like, you know, going to New York to really go to auditions or anything like that. It was more just me finding ways to kind of get in there, get into some doors. I think uh, I had read that you were 14 when a Ford model guy discovered you and, and uh, sent you kind of on this journey then. Yes, I was, but I didn't um, exactly start really modeling until um, I was about 17, 16, 17, because, you know, I wanted to finish high school and everything. and. I started working for a photography stu studio in New Jersey um, and the photographer there who owned the studio decided he's like, you, you know, maybe you should go meet with some agencies. Um, and so he would take, he took me to New York City with some other girls to, to meet some talent uh, modeling agencies and I got signed and that really was like what changed my life was definitely modeling and I was not very good in the beginning. I was, you know, a little shy, but you know, it's it's such an interesting thing for a, a young girl to model because you don't really know who you are at that time yet. You know, I'm not speaking for everyone, but for, for myself, I hadn't really stepped into like who I was as, as a woman. And um, <laughs> so I think it was, it was interesting to wear these like a lot of big dresses and, you know, I'd always been kind of a tomboy, so it was it was fun too. I, I I've run into this a, a lot in in interviewing over the past uh, I'm gonna fifty years of interviewing that a lot of the most beautiful <laughs> I, literally I've been doing this for fifty years. Uh, I, I can't believe it. Yeah, so yeah. when you were born <laughs> since <laughs> since uh, the days of silent television, it's uh, just <laughs> uh, but a lot of the most beautiful women in the world we're tomboys. Uh, and I think that adds to uh, uh, how you project yourself in, in a modeling career. I think I, I think it's very alluring, if I can use that word, uh, to a camera. Well, <clears throat> I've never, I, I've always struggled with self-esteem. I was very bullied as a, as a kid. And, and even in high school, I was very bullied. So I never thought of myself as, as beautiful, um, I just, you know, kind of felt like, I think sub like your subconscious knows what you want to do, but you don't 
it, it was like, I didn't define myself by like, oh, I want to model and I think I'm beautiful or something. It was more just like, um, I know that if I followed this trajectory, it could lead me to possibly directing movies one day, which was always my ultimate goal. And so I've never, I've never thought of myself as, as beautiful. I've definitely struggled with self-esteem issues. And from a young age, I think kids were tough on me. Um, I don't know if that was just part of my path, it was part of like growing up. I never really felt like I fit in much. So, you know, it was nice. It, I think I really loved moving to New York City and being around people that were very um, open-minded and and you didn't feel judged or, you know, because kids can be pretty mean. Oh, they, <laughs> so, can. they can. Be pre pretty mean, um, you know, and, and I think everyone has their, their own path. And there was definitely times where I didn't even like going to school. Like kids were, you know, were, were tough on me. So. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. You know, but, but, but here you have survived and, and come out of it. Uh, the, the the whole idea of being bullied, you know, um, I, I just think that I want to say tell you what your parents told you is that they were jealous. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was kind of an awkward, you know, I it, I was sure. very very thin, and I remember, you know, I think body image issues happen. I, I just naturally was very very thin, and I grew at a at a fast right around sophomore year of high school I really got pretty tall I'm five nine and you know I hit a growth spurt and I think I just to some of the other kids it looked like oh maybe she's not eating or something and I, I was I was I loved McDonald's <laughs> but I just remember like people were kind of telling me how oh you're so skinny and you're gross and like it was you know it it hurts it hurts Anytime people are putting a focus on you negatively, it's it's really damaging to a, to a kid. Millions of people are losing their dental coverage every year or can't afford dental care due to the high cost. Just a simple cleaning can cost over $100. But there is an answer, TDA. For about a dollar a day, Total Dental Administrators covers over 200 dental procedures. Whether you're an individual, a family, self-employed, or retired, TDA has a plan that's right for you, starting about a dollar a day. So call or click for your free information kit and see how affordable dental health can be. Is every set you're on in education? Yes, absolutely. I never feel like you ever want to stop learning. I learn, I think you learn from everyone in your life, you know, even bad experiences. And, um, you know, no movie shoot ever goes 100%. There's always going to be a scene that felt like, you know, a little rushed or because a lot of the smaller budget <clears throat> movies, you get two takes. You don't get a hundred takes, like you're in a Fincher film or something like that. You know, you, you don't get the luxury of that. So you really have to like hit your mark and know your beat and also be emotionally dropped into whatever the scene requires. And that's, I think the most challenging thing. So it's kind of like boot camp in a way to, to do that. Um, but, I mean, every actor that comes onto these sets. I worked with Dee Wallace. She played my mom in this movie that we just wrapped. I mean, just like such a, a lovely person and incredible. To, I mean, learned from her every every second of working with her. It was just incredible. And uh, and Joey Lawrence was in the movie, and he's so funny in the movie. And it was just great. It was, Really You're in the fun. right business, aren't you? You just uh, you just you do so well. 
do you have any anything that you do to prepare yourself? I mean, I know a lot of actresses, and you're a musician. Uh, a lot of actresses will listen to a or put together a, a playlist for their characters, and that helps them kind of get into the character. Do you do think similar things like that? Oh, absolutely. I I have a whole playlist on my phone. It, it, it's not really specific to the the character always, but there like certain certain um, songs will get me to an emotional place if I need to. But you're actually you're right because for this movie, I listened to a lot of lighter, poppier songs because I wanted to stay, um, you know, happy and bubbly. And I think sometimes after a 12 hour shoot, or when you're getting to the end of the day and you have to have that energy and you're like, how many more coffees can I drink? Like, it's like put on some, you know, some Britney Spears or something. <laughs> it's like gives you a little boost of energy, you know. Well, in the same vein, do you, you know, again, as a singer, do you, do you hear rhythms and cadences in, in the different roles that you play? Yes, I think, um, I think that that is, I love, changing my voice for different different um, parts. I think, you know, not really change, it, it's not something like you think, oh, I'm going to change my voice, but certain characters will affect your voice in a different way. I'm losing my voice a little right now, but um, uh, definitely there was one, there was one role where my mom watched it and I didn't really notice. She's like, that doesn't even sound like you. She's like, that sounds, because sometimes that you you chant, I think we we channel something when we're making a, a film. It's like it's not always it's not always our story. It's like yeah, I, and I think I think all of the different elements that go into an acting uh, situation uh, always inform your character. Like I don't, you know, as listen as as an actor myself, you know, unless I'm I'm dressed and and get the costume and all of that. I don't really feel 100% in character or in the moment until all of that is is you know surrounding me, and then I can find the voice of that character. Is that true for you? I would say, well, the first thing that I do, um, I've worked with Greg Braun. He's my acting coach. I've worked with him for almost, I mean, almost eight years now, or even longer. So we use the method taught by Susan Batson originally and she's an incredible woman I mean meeting her changed my life and Greg has changed my life he we we start with going inside um, to find the part of ourselves that connects with the character so we do a character bio we do um, which I, I do for every movie I do <clears throat> a biography for the character the backstory for the character and then then really start to like look at the script as a whole and find things that other characters define me as too which i think is important so if like a char another character says oh you're so you can be so bossy or something like that's a that's something you have to take in like what are what is the other characters <clears throat> opinion of, of yours now, did they teach that at, at Labyrinth? That uh, you know that type of approach, or or did you get that at New Collective? That uh, w when you attended those uh, those yeah. regiments, um, definitely more New Collective, just because that's the most um, the longest time I've I've studied with a certain teacher. I I worked with I went to the Labyrinth Master Class program, and I actually worked with Philip Seymour Hoffman's brother. Um, he was one of my teachers there. That was, it was a great experience. It was kind of like a workshop where you work with different, different teachers at Labyrinth. And we did, um, we did a lot of plays and we worked on characters. And then I also worked with Elizabeth Kemp, who um, sadly uh, passed away a few years ago. And she's, She's from the Actors Studio. She worked with, um, she actually worked with Bradley Cooper a lot. And just, I think that working with her changed my life because she was all about real emotion and bringing, bringing your truth to a role. And then, um, yes, yeah, so I think they've been really lucky to meet some incredible mentors along the way. But Greg Braun, <clears throat> 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to, I, I don't believe I would have worked without Greg because he taught me something really important. And because I would get very nervous in auditions before years ago, I would um, get really tight in my throat. Like I would get so scared. And I think I would go back to like the girl that was like bullied in high school and not feel good enough, you know? And he told me everything you're feeling is perfect for the character. So if you feel nervous or you feel anxious before an audition, use it. Every emotion you feel is so powerful. And that advice changed my life. been so busy you've got a ton of stuff coming or in production and in you know uh, uh going on um you can never go home again is is coming out very soon uh you play emma in that and uh she's she's a femme fatale <laughs> yeah she's um she's got a mission emma's on a mission in this in this movie i'm really excited to see it i don't know it's kind of like a single white female kind of vibe where I don't want to give too much away, but there is definitely a hair change that happens in the, in the movie. And, um, you know, Emma's, Emma is reacting from being, from being hurt. She feels rejected. And I think that's what you have, always have to tap into like the truth that you can connect to. And it's like, we've all felt rejected. Emma, takes things to extremes, obviously, but um, we all understand what it's like to love people that don't love us back exactly, you know? Exactly. I want to go back to the, when we opened this this conversation, you said at around five years old, you, you wanted to be a director. And I'm wondering if that's a previous life. Oh my gosh, Tony, I love that you said that. That's so <clears throat> right up my alley with things that I like to talk about. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's funny. Kids, they say that kids know what a little bit about their last life. I mean, depending on your beliefs, I I I do like to believe that we uh, we had other lives before this one, and I think you never know. You wonder why certain things um, are so important as a, as a like. I was obsessed with violence as a kid, and I. I don't know why. I was begging my mom to play, that I wanted to play violin. I really don't have much of an interest in violins now, but I remember as a, as a kid, I was super like set on. I would read like violin magazines. I'm like, where is this coming from? Because there are people that are born great musicians and where do they get that from? Where do they get the math skills from? You know, so I, yeah, think, exactly. I think that enters into it. I think there's maybe a genetic memory that we have. I would have to agree with you on that. And just, you know, you knowing your dream from a young age, it's like you, that little voice kind of, that subconscious like push, like, like you always know what you want to do in, in life. I think that we all, we just have something that just kind of guides us. And, um, you know, that's why dreams are so important. Never give up on your dreams because it's like you're saying, you're, you're almost doubting your heart and what your heart's desire is. And I think the human condition, I, I believe that fear is the number one, like thing that holds us back from achieving what we believe we can accomplish. Because I think you hear no a few times and that's enough for some people. And you know what? That's the test. I believe that you push through those times. That, you know, people have told me no so many times. And it's like, if I listen to every person that said, you're crazy, you you know, stop, just quit. Or And, and the whole audition process is, is built on the word no. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> we're all... All actors, uh, Russell Crowe told me that all actors are professional auditioners and we only take breaks from auditioning when we get a role. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs>
Love that. I know you you interviewed like the best of the best, and I'm like I feel so honored to that you even want to speak to me. It's so nice, but um, yeah, I think that's so true. And I remember there was this one acting studio in LA where they would literally show you the director's comments, like after you audition, you could kind of like go on and see your work and there would be like comments. And this one guy just like totally tore me apart. He's like, horrible outfit. I don't know what she was doing. Like, it was so mean. And I was just like, I think for a few days, I was like, geez, I gotta reevaluate like what I'm doing. This portion of Screen Chatter is presented by VP Dental. Check out our great dental plans starting at just $16 per month. You are just a delightful conversation, and I do want to thank you for... uh, not only not only doing this, but you know, over the period of uh, people don't realize, you know, that we do a lot of uh, communication back and forth. But we have become really good friends, I think, and I, I can't wait to uh, see you in person. Maybe take you and your family out for dinner or something, and just uh, uh, just get to know you a little bit better. Um, you're I, I, you're just a very sweet and and uh, kind human being. Thank you. I I just love talking to you, by the way. Um, I love talking to you, always, yeah.